Hi, thank you for joining me in the Louis file again today. All right, we're gonna going to kind of do a little bit of a continuation of the last uh, Louis file, which is a uh, I guess I'm gonna probably title it "Meats for Idols," so you can look for it that way. Um, so this is a, a continuance of that. The Apostle Paul was uh, talking with the Corinthians, uh, a uh, pagan or Gentile, predominantly Gentile region of the world. And they, uh, of course, was a church, so they, they were become believers in Jesus Christ, but they had a lot of cultural things that they had to grapple with. Uh, one of which was not a small matter, was idols and uh, idol worship and temple uh, practices and rituals. Uh, in the last video, we looked back in Acts 15, and we saw where the early church, the Jews, Paul, James, John, Peter all came to the conclusion that they should tell the Gentiles to stay away from uh, just stay away from the meat that's offered to idols. Just stay away from the idols altogether. Stay away from sexual immorality. And I think that was fornication was more mostly pointed toward the uh, fornication that was going on in the idol temples. It was part of their ritual practice to have uh, temple. Uh, I don't know if prostitutes the right word or not. I mean, I don't think they were getting paid, but it was part of a religious ceremony. Uh, today, I want to show you something here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Where, so the Apostle Paul is pleading with the Corinthians here to just come to them. Come, you know, we're open ourselves wide open to you. We've been through the ringer to get you the gospel message and to get you free from uh, all of the bondage that comes with uh, the Gentile or pagan practices that you're accustomed to. And he's just, he's just saying to them, come out and uh, come to us. Come join us. And I, I'm going to read some verses here. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. He says, Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. <laughs> so good. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from the midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and, I shall, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. So God is declaring, he's saying, come out from among those pagan rituals. Come out from those lesser gods that you've been serving. Come out from those idol temples. Uh, I mean, he clearly says, you know, he calls, he, he draws a line and he says, there's righteousness and lawlessness. They can't go together. There's light and dark. They can't go together. There's, you can't have Christ in one hand and Belial or some other God in the other. It, it, it requires a clean break from your past. It, re, it requires a clean break from the gods, probably, of your fathers, the rituals, the traditions that you've always known and been accustomed to. He's saying the temple of God is who you are, and you have no fellowship with idols anymore. And he even he harkens back to Scripture. I love it. Paul says that God's saying, look, I'll dwell among you. I'll walk among you. I'll be your God. And you'll be my people. But you got to come out and be my people. Isn't that something? So he says, and I will make, I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters. So way back at the Tower of Babel, this, this is a whole series of videos I'm doing based on uh, the idea of the unseen realm by Michael Heiser, which is a, a divine, he says there's a divine counsel principle throughout the scriptures. And I, I would urge you, encourage you to look back on my previous videos. I'll probably put these down in the thing below the video here where it says show more or see more. And it'll have a list of the uh, uh, related videos I've done. And I would, I would say you need, to, you need to look at that if you want to catch up. But at the Tower of Babel, the idea here is, is that God, Yahweh, dispersed the people. And he put them under the authority of lesser gods, which became jealous of each other and, and they became uh, prideful and they and they started getting worship from the gentiles or the nations and because they they liked it 
I mean, Yahweh, the idea is, is that Yahweh had put them over these nations. He had disinherited those people, basically because they were not doing what he told them to do. And he started over uh, his own nation over with a man named Abram, which is found in Genesis 12. But the promise was from the beginning that all nations, even those that I just disinherited at Babel, those, those nations too will be blessed by you, Abram. Uh, of course, through the whole of Scripture, we discover uh, down through hundreds of years later in Galatians, we discover the Apostle Paul reveals to us that the promise was made to Abraham and his seed, and he makes a very clear distinction, not seeds. So it's not the many Jewish people, not the heritage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in a sense of Hebrew people just because they were born in the physical sense through Abram, but, but rather it was through this one seed, which is Jesus Christ. So the promise God gave to Abram of, of the whole, all nations being blessed by him was going to come through Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul goes out into these nations and he declares the gospel message. He, he says that Christ was uh, crucified, buried, and raised back. That the one true God, the God of Israel, Yahweh himself, raised up Jesus Christ and he was he was his one unique son, and we are to come to him to find what we're really after and what we're really looking for. So the Apostle Paul is calling these Gentiles out from their idols and out from their pagan practices, and he's saying, come join us. Uh, purify yourself by coming, going away from all of those things and come to the, to the one true God and be the temple of the one true God. Wow, so it's going to require some separation from some other things. Uh, so, way back in Deuteronomy, I'm going to show you another place. Back in Deuteronomy 29, it, it tells us that these other gods were not given for uh, Israel. Deuteronomy 29, let's see here. Deuteronomy 29, verse 26. Let's see, 29, 26. It says... Uh, they went and served other gods and worshipped them. Gods whom they have not known and whom he had not allotted to them. Then it says the anger of the Lord burned out, but you know, came out against them. So he had warned them over and over, Israel, not to get engaged with these idols and these other nations' worship practices, but they did. Down through the ages, uh, Israel did get entangled up into idol problems and uh, Basically, Yahweh is saying, look, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I'm really in charge here, and you're my inheritance. So Israel fell for some trickery of the, uh, uh, the enemy and got caught up in some disobedience, and God, Yahweh, God, the God of Israel, was not too happy about it. But, but on the other hand, they had been assigned, those other gods had been assigned to the nations for a time. Now, if you're having a hard time understanding this, uh, if you look in Romans 1, you'll see where it says that although they knew God, they didn't glorify Him as God and they were not thankful. And it says, so therefore God gave them over. And in three, three different occasions in Romans 1, it says, so God gave them over. So when people reject the one true God and don't do what the one true God is saying, then it appears that it's His pattern to, to hand them over, to give them over to something else. It's basically like, oh, so you don't want me, you want uh, some other God? Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand you over to that lesser God. And, and the hope is, God's hope is, is that, that, that they would get sick and tired and they would get wore out from trying to serve this lesser God because this lesser God's going to be a, going to drive them crazy. He's going to have them subservient in a way that, that brings bondage. Uh, so at the Babel story, it's a similar thing. God disinherits them and he, he gives them over to these lesser gods, but it's not because he, he doesn't want them to, to partake of his inheritance, but, but they had to get sick of, enough to recognize their need. Uh, and then through Christ, it says that there is no Jew or Gentile. There's no uh, Scythian or slave. Or there's, no free, there's no male or female. All of those distinctions uh, evaporate in Christ. Um, so he brings us back to the one true God through Jesus Christ. 
And that's the message. That's the gospel message. Um, and that, if you look in the book of Acts, you see that that's what Paul did. He went to all these nations, and that was his mission. His mission was to call these people back to the one true God. So that, that lays a good panorama, that lays a good map down if you think about how the book of Acts is written and the journeys that Paul took. So everywhere he went, he was confronted by a people that was involved in a, the worship of another god, a lesser god, but it was another god. Another spirit was uh, ruling in that territory or region, and it caused uproar. Every time Paul <laughs> preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, there, it seems there, be, there was a riot. There was some kind of uh, disturbance and uproar that a lot of times landed him in jail. I heard some guy one time, he said, the Apostle Paul always knew where two places were in every city. Because when he got there, a lot of times he would go straight to the temple or synagogue. If there was Jews there, he would go to some temple area and then he would find himself in jail. So he, he, always, knew, <laughs> he always knew where the synagogue or the temple was and where the, the local jail was, because that's that's eventually that's what basically caused that's what ended up happening because the gospel message is offensive and it's a and it's a uh, it's an affront and it is uh, it's an assault on these other uh, spiritual beings that that thought they were in charge. So when Jesus shows up on the scene, it causes an uproar. So just like us in our daily life here now in 2018. As it date this video, but even in the modern times, when we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our fellow employees or our neighbors, sometimes it doesn't go so well. So be warned about that. But that doesn't mean that you don't share it. Uh, Jesus told us that the world hated him; it's going to hate us too. So we just we set our minds on that, and we know that the reason that it hates us is because it hates Jesus. And the reason it hates Jesus is because the gospel frees people from the control of these other spiritual powers and beings that are uh, trying to rule in the place of God. All right, so I hope this video finds you well, and I would hope that you would stick around as we continue to look into the New Testament and what these idols and these lesser gods and these powers and principalities uh, are really about. All right, I'll see you next time on the Louis File.